thanks for joining again. I really appreciate it. And let's jump off into a good conversation here. Dimitri, um, tell us a little bit about your background. I mean, what is it? Uh, who are you and what do you do? I mean, where, where, what's your background? So, yes, thanks. Thanks for that. So I started as electronic engineer. I did uh, all my studies in the UK. And then uh, I stumbled up across air traffic management. After my PhD, I did a, a PhD in satellite navigation and integrity algorithm in flight management systems, basically how aircraft can self-navigate using uh, GPS and other such satellite systems. And I was fortunate enough to get into a, the graduate program of National Air Traffic Services. Basically, that's the air navigation service provider that controls most of the UK airspace, definitely the en route, the FAA of uh, the UK, in a sense. Um, and I was very fortunate to have bosses that got me passionate in air traffic management. That is a very, very niche industry, actually, which I didn't know much about, but actually is a very important cog in the whole aviation ecosystem. Right. Yeah, it really Take, is very niche. Um, how how did you happen to choose satellite navigation and FMSs, flight management systems? How, well, why did you choose that for a for a, a PhD study? Oh, uh, it's all about the path of life, right? Luck. I think I just stumbled across it. I had a number of options, and they offered me the job at that point. And I think a bit my life was up at that path. I mean, I'm curious. I think we are all curious. We all adapt to uh, opportunities, and the opportunity was there. Very good, very good. So, um, so you you ended up uh, going into studies at Cranfield University, or um, you know, I, I don't think you went into studies. Where did you actually study at? So uh, I studied at Imperial College London, uh, my oh. PhD, and then I started uh, working in London for NATS, the National Electric Services, uh, close to Heathrow. So Heathrow was one of our main customers. I uh, deployed their traffic management systems all across the UK in UK airports. How you um, improve the systems, improve the efficiencies of what their traffic controllers do, the pilots do, how they communicate uh, together, and how the whole system works together in a collaborative way. Okay. After well, how did the how did the conversation of blockchain, you know, enter into that? You know, how how that, did you get involved in that? That that came a bit more recently, to be honest. Although blockchain exists for quite a few years. I went industry, as I said, working for NUTS. Then I went to a Gatwick airport. And two and a half years ago, I joined Cranfield to head the Advanced Air Mobility Research Group, really pushing innova innovation and trying to push the boundaries of innovation and how we deploy those systems. Because air traffic management as aviation, historically, is a very safety critical operation, very uh, slow to implement change just because of this safety critical uh, context, right? To test, validate, meet the regulatory requirements, meet the safety requirements. It takes time to implement change, but also to get the users, like the air traffic controllers and the pilots, to accept change as well. Yeah. So I came to okay. Cranfield well, exactly to do that, to be able to push those boundaries in a way. As you, as you can see, I have the airfield behind me, so we can do quite a lot of beautiful stuff from concept development to actually deploying things and testing them in a controlled operational environment. Well, let me ask you this, Dimitri, you brought up the word advanced air mobility, so we can give people context of the things that you're focused on right now. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me a little bit more, what do you call advanced air mobility? So there is a very specific definition from uh, the US of advanced air mobility, right? The way we use it in the in Cranfield, we actually uh, put it as an umbrella term to define everything that is increased automation, increased autonomy in air traffic management, increased uh, decision support tools, as I said, for air traffic controllers and pilots, but also integrating safely all these new aerial vehicles that we are seeing that are more common nowadays. You know, these drones for good, uncrewed aerial vehicles, new electric um, vertical takeoff and landing systems, the new air taxis, and all these uh, futuristic, in a sense, uh, aerial vehicles to share the airspace of con conventional air traffic, which, as I said, is very safety-critical-minded. 